Electronegativity was often discussed in high school and undergraduate classes. In general, you learn it's a property of atoms, it affects bond polarity, how it roughly trends in the periodic table, and that's about it. Here we'll talk about where electronegativity values come from and how those values were calculated. More importantly, we'll talk about what it really means. You may not realize you can use electronegativity to calculate important properties of molecules like bond energy. There's even a charge scheme based on electronegativity so that you can calculate consistent charges in molecules. In other words, if Hamlet was looking at what most people are taught about electronegativity, you might say, there are more things in heaven and earth than you're dreamt of in your undergraduate textbook. Electronegativity isn't something that falls out of the math from quantum mechanics. It isn't a property that we have one set way of measuring, so there are different scales that have been devised. Here, we'll briefly discuss three different flavors of electronegativity. Pauling electronegativity, the original and probably still most talked about. Sanderson electronegativity, in my opinion the most useful. And Alred Rochow electronegativity, which gives a good description of what electronegativity means. A good definition of electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electron density in a bond. To illustrate, you can look at what we call the bonding molecular orbital for a simple system. This is where the pair of electrons bonding the two atoms together is residing around the two nuclei. This is what it looks like for H2. The two white balls indicate the positions of the hydrogen nuclei, and there is an evenly dispersed electron cloud around them shown with the blue mesh. The two atoms have the same electronegativity, so they attract electrons the same way. Fluorine has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen, so let's look at HF and its bonding orbital. Here the light green ball is the fluorine nucleus and the white is hydrogen. The cloud is obviously distorted towards the more electronegative fluorine atom. You might think that maybe the electrons are distorted towards fluorine because it just has more electrons than hydrogen, but this is just the two electrons in the orbital bonding the two nuclei together. Even so, we can look at IF, where fluorine is bound to iodine. This time iodine has far more electrons than fluorine, but fluorine is far more electronegative and the bonding orbital still distorts towards the light green fluorine and away from the purple iodine. 